everyone, my name is Audrey and I'm the Education Programs Manager here at the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame Museum. And welcome to Storytime with Audrey. Today we are going to be reading classic stories, famous folk tales, retold by Xavier Perota and illustrated by Alessandra Fusi. And I do want to give a special shout out to the Waco McLennan County Public Library because that's where we got the book for today's story time. All right, let's get started. So these are three small tales put together in one book. And we are going to start with the legend of John Henry. John Henry, Henry was a giant of a man, tall and proud as a mountain, and just as solid. Steady as a rock, too, with rock-hard determination. You ask anybody in West Virginia, they'll tell you that there never was, never will be, a better man than John Henry. John Henry cleared the way for railroad tracks. He was so able, folks say he was born with a hammer in his hands. He could work more than 10 men and never need a rest. John Henry was a steel driving man. He'd hammer a spike into solid rock, fill the hole with dynamite and boom, blast that mountain wide open. One day, a new steam-powered drill chugged up the mountain. It puffed like a dragon, its whistle shrieking, get out of my way. John Henry knew the machine meant the end of his job, and all his friends' jobs, if it drilled faster than the men. Let's race, he challenged the driver. See who gets through the mountain fastest. On your mark, get set, go. Sparks flew as John Henry swung his hammer, cleaving deeper and deeper into the mountain until there was only a pinpoint of sunlight behind him. John Henry raced the drill all night. He could hear it chewing its way towards him, unstoppable and fast. but not as fast as John Henry. At sunrise, he cut through the last bit of rock between him and the engine. He walked right past it into the fresh morning air, beat it fair and square. Hooray for John Henry, his friends hollered. John proved mind, muscle, and heart can't be defeated. Every train that roars by still pounds out the steady beat of his hammer, praising John Henry, the steel driving man. Next is Pecos Bill. Texas is so big, even its stories stretch a mile. Take Pecos Bill. Folks say a pack of coyotes raised Bill. He grew up wild. When he held, the creatures understood him, and he understood them, too. Pecos Bill and his coyote family were right fond of one another. The night Bill left to be a cowboy, they all howled sadly. The stars fell like tears till only one was left. That's why Texas is the Lone Star State. Bill was cold that night. When he heard rattling, he reckoned it was his teeth chattering. Then he saw it. The meanest rattlesnake in Texas coiled around him. Bill grabbed it and swung it dizzy. After that, that snake became Bill's lasso. They got along dandy. A cowboy needs a horse. Bill being Bill, he jumped on the wickedest one he could find. The horse took off at full speed and flew Bill over the Arctic Circle, under Chile, and through the Grand Canyon. But Bill stuck on like a bird. A horse like that is never really tamed. Folks say he ate only dynamite and he wouldn't let anybody but Bill ride him. He was so fast, Bill named him Lightning. 
One evening, Pecos Bill heard a loud yee-haw. He saw a woman riding a giant catfish down the rapids, one-handed. Bill's heart went bumpity bumpity bump. Here was the woman for him, brave, beautiful, and wild. Want some beans? hollered Bill. Sure, shouted the woman. My name's Slew Foot Sue, she said, and you're Pecos Bill. I've heard of you and your lightning fast horse. Bill was a goner. Will you marry me, Slew Foot Sue? he asked, starry eyed. Sure, replied Sue, if you li let me ride that horse of yours to the wedding. Well, draw Bill, drawed Bill, shaking his head. Okay. On Bill and Sue's wedding day, the sky was a peculiar coppery green. Sue wore a dress with a springy bustle. The moment she sat on lightning, the cantankerous horse threw her sky high. Then down she came, landing on her bustle with such a boing that she bounced right back up again, this time so high that her head knocked against the moon. Pecos Bill saw an inky black funnel barreling toward him. A cyclone, he shouted. He lassoed the cyclone, hopped on top, and scooped up Slew Foot Sue. Yeehaw, whooped Sue, delighted. She and Bill rode the cyclone till it wore itself out. They slid to the ground. Are you all right, darling? Bill asked. Sure, said Sue, but I'll never ride that horse of yours again. All right, this is our last story about Paul Bunyan. Paul Bunyan was the biggest baby ever born. He weighed 100 pounds, and his beard was so thick that his ma combed it with a pine tree. His pa made him a cradle big as a canoe and put it in the harbor. Paul rocked so hard, he caused a tidal wave that swept two villages out to sea. Paul grew to be m more massive than a house. His stride was a mile wide. Son, said Pa, a fella big as you should help folks. So Paul became a lumberjack. He cleared land for people to plant crops and build roads. Paul's ax was so big that he dragged it behind him and created the Great Lakes. Paul hired the seven axe men to work with him. They were 10 feet tall and could pop their buttons in one inhale. Still, the axe men had to hustle to chop down trees as quick as Paul. Hot Biscuit Sally was the cook. Paul built her a griddle big as an ice rink. The axe men greased it by skating on it with giant chunks of bacon tied to their boots. One winter was so cold, words froze. Paul dug a baby ox out of the snow. Aw, cooed the axeman. Let's call him Babe. Paul thought Babe was blue with cold. But even after Babe thawed by the fire, he remained a bright blue. Babe grew up to be Titanic. He was longer than 40 spades and heavier than 60 barrels of fish. It took a crow all winter to fly from one horn to the other. Every day, Hot Biscuit Sally made Babe his favorite sandwich, 10 acres worth of sweet clover stuffed between giant flapjacks. Some loggers said to Paul, this river twists and turns so much that our logs get jammed. Can you help us? Sure, said Paul. Paul hitched Babe to one bend of the river. The big blue ox dug in his hooves and pulled harder than any ox ever did before or ever will again. Finally, with a splash and a roar, 
Babe pulled that river straight as an arrow. Hooray, the loggers cheered. Thank you. But Paul couldn't stop to talk. He was chasing Babe, who just kept walking, probably looking forward to a sweet clover sandwich. The end. And I want to thank everyone for joining us today for Storytime with Audrey at the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum, and I hope you can join us next time. Bye-bye now!